do is we're going to make a file that looks something like this. So it might lo not look all that impressive, but this is where you're going to have to start to learn all this. So let's close that. Let's open up After Effects. When you've got it open, you're going to click Composition up at the top and click New Composition. All right, I'm going to name this Mutz Fan. Make sure that it is 1280 by 720 and that it's the frame rate doesn't matter, but while we're here, we're going to change this to 25 frames because I don't want that drop frame. And down here under duration, I want to make it one minute. The background color doesn't matter, and I'm going to click OK. So over here, I'm going to delete that because that is not what we want. And then I'm going to grab from the Google Drive, you should, be, you should be able to download this folder. In the folder, the important things are this MUTZ vector, this ping notification, and then these two Saber installers. If you're on the Mac, you're going to use this one, this DMG. On the, on the PC, you're going to use that executable file. You're going to open it up, you're going to click install, you're going to open it, and then you're just going to follow the directions. Click next until it's done. But what we want right now is we're going to grab this vector and that ping sound, and we're going to drag them down here. All right, so now I've got everything I need. So I'm going to start with this MUTZ vector. I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to drop it in. So there is my picture that I want. But right now, if I look down here, see how every time I click the space bar, it plays. But nothing's happening. That's because we haven't animated it yet. So come down here, these little mountain ranges. The bigger mountain ranges zoom in, the smaller mountain ranges zoom out. So we're going to come over here to one second. Let's zoom in and make sure we're exactly at one second. All right. Click this down arrow. Click it again. We're going to click this position clock. And what that does is that puts a keyframe. A keyframe tells it where animation stops or starts and how to animate in between. So at one second exactly, it tells it right now that it wants it to be right there. But that's not exactly true. I don't want it to be there. These two numbers right here, this 640 is the x-axis, this 360 is the y-axis. I'm going to move this down because I don't want it floating. I want it to look like it's on the ground. So there we go. So that's about where I want it. So at one second, it's going to be there. But I want it to start off the screen. So I'm going to move down to time zero. I'm going to grab this y-axis again, and I'm going to move it to the right, which moves it down. I'm going to move it down off the screen. So now when I hit the spacebar to play it, now we actually have some animation. All right. So let's move over to four seconds, and I'm going to animate this over to the side where I had it in the preview. I'm going to move it over, but see this line here? That curved line, that's telling, that's my motion. So if I play it now, it kind of spins around, floats up in the screen, and goes over there. And that's not at all what I want. Because I want it to come up to there, and then I want it to shoot over to the side, but I don't want it to do that for a while. So I'm going to come over here to three and a half seconds. I'm going to copy this keyframe right here. To do that, I hit Command or Control C. I'm going to paste it right where I'm at here with Command or Control V. So now, between one second and three and a half seconds, it's just going to sit in place. Then it's going to rock it over to where I want it to be. But I also want it to get smaller as it goes right in the corner, because if it's just in the corner, I feel like it's overtaking the whole screen. So we're going to go back to our three and a half second mark. We're going to hit the scale clock. So at three and a half seconds, it's at full frame. But I want it to go down to, let's say, 70%. So now, that's the size I want, but now again, it's just kind of floating in the middle of nowhere. So as long as I am right on top of my keyframe, I can change it, and whatever I change is just going to adjust it at that mark. It's not going to add a new one. It's just going to change with that, with that specific keyframe tells it to do. So if I click play now, now it shrinks over and moves to the side, which is exactly what I want. All right, so now the next step, I'm going to make those rings of light. 
So what first step, I'm going to right click in this blank space, go to new solid. I'm going to name this light ring. So make sure it's the same size, 1280 by 720, color doesn't matter, and click OK. Now, two things before I actually make the ring. First, I need to change my mode. If you don't see mode right here, if you see these little toggle buttons, click this toggle switches and modes button. Come up to mode, we're going to set it to screen. Screen in Photoshop means that you can see what's behind it, but you're going to mute the colors a little bit. So I'm going to come to one and a half seconds, and I'm going to use this ellipse tool. So this ellipse tool is going to make a mask on my layer. So to do that, I, hit, I click and then I hold shift, which is going to make it a perfect circle. So I hold shift, I make my circle, I come back over to my select tool, I select my mask, now I drag it up here and I drop it right on top of my light. And if I want to move it around, I can use the arrow keys and it's going to move it little tiny bits at a time. One frame, or one frame pigment at a time. All right, so I've got that looks a little bit too big, so I'm going to use my scale. I'm going to scale this down to maybe 90%. And then let's move that down. Uh, no, let's go down to 70. Yeah, that looks better. I want it to be pretty small when it starts out. So actually, let's take it all the way down to 50%. Make it really small. So it looks like it's starting from the center light. All right. So I've got my ring, I've got it where I want it, now I need to come up here to effects, type saber, I grab my saber effect and I drop it right on top of my ring. But that really didn't do what I want at all, it just put a saber there. Or did it? Over here on the side, if you see this customize core, click on that and custom type or core type, I click saber and I go to layer mask. And if you notice here, it turns that ring into a glowing ring. So if I click this toggle mask shape, you're going to get rid of that mask and only show the ring. So I also, um, I don't like that color. The blue just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to make it yellow, kind of like the lights. All right. So now I can kind of see what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. But I don't like, it looks too thick to me. So these are all my presets. You guys can pick any one you want. Personally, for this, I'm going to go with that thin. But anytime you pick a preset, it changes the color back. So now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to make it yellow again. All right. So I've got my ring made. But it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. That's not what I want, so I need to go back into the Transform menu. So in Transform, the first thing I'm going to do is transform the, opaci the opacity. The opacity tells it if I turn the opacity down to zero, it's going to be invisible. If I turn it up to 100, it's fully visible. I don't ever want this to be fully visible, so I'm going to set it to 50. Then I'm going to go back a few frames, and I'm going to set it to zero. So now, if I play that, it slowly fades in, but the background never stays solid, which is what I want. And in fact, maybe I want that down to 35%. All right, so now, if I play this, it, it fades in, but now I want it to get bigger. So that's my scale option again. So I'm going to start at 50. I'm going to move it up to two seconds, so we've gone half a second, and then I'm going to crank the scale up to 5,000. So what that does is, that causes it to expand. But what happened? It went off the screen, so I need to change the position. So if I go back to this original point, click my position clock, go back to two seconds, 
And then right here, this is my zoom on the screen. I'm going to go out to 12% just so I can see it. So that's my ring right there. If I move it over, now I want to move it up. I want to move it over. And this is going to take a little bit of time. This is this is what After Effects is, guys. This is tedious, monotonous stuff. But once you've done it once or twice, it's just a matter of trying new things. All right. So now I zoomed it out. I'm going to click this little triangle right here on opacity to add a new keyframe. See how it just added a new one? It didn't change anything. It just added a new keyframe. Then I'm going to go two keyframes out and set my opacity back to zero. So if I zoom back in, go back to 100%. Now if I go back, it makes my little ring that, that pops out there. So that's one ring, but I want three. I made three of those rings in the last one, so we're going to do that again. And the fastest way to do that is hit, hit Command or Control D. Make sure you selected Light Ring and then hit Command D. You're going to duplicate it. So now, if I come over here, I want to. So I want a, a ring every half a second. So to do that, I need to. So I zoom in. This is how I can move within the movie here. So if I grab this, this is just, this is the actual clip. I can move it and tell it where to play. So I'm going to move that one to 10, that one to 5, and then we're going to play it. We're going to see what that looks like. And that's way too fast, so let's go back. So maybe move this one to 10 and this one to 20 frames. That's still a little fast. So let's do 15 and 30. All right, so we've got our pulse, but we don't have our sound. And that's this guy right here, that ping notification. So if I drag that in here, I need to find where it pings it. So it's just kind of playing with it until you hit. So it's still a little early now. So, And the way you can actually see it, if I click the audio here and I go to this waveform, I can actually see where the audio starts at. So again, now I've got one of them, now I'm just going to duplicate it twice. And if you remember, we moved it over 30 frames. So it starts at, looks like 11. So we're going to come over here, and then from there. So every one of these is 5, 5, 10. I may not have moved that over enough, we'll see. That last one's a little quick. All right, so I've got my pings. I've got my light rings. The last thing I need to do is make my text layer. And that's one of the easiest parts. So let's go over to where we want to make it so, let's, so we can actually see what we're doing. So we're going to zoom out on this timeline until that moves over. I come back over here, find some empty space. I right click, new, text. And here I'm just going to type Mutz, fan of the game. All right. So over here on the side of the screen, this is all your text window application. So here I can change the color the font size, I can change 
the height of the characters, the height between them, I can change how high they are here, how wide they are. So maybe I want the characters a little wider because that Mutz logo, it's pretty wide. Because I to match that color, I just click the eyedropper and grab that red and it changes the color of my text. If you want to, you can come in with the text tool there and you can actually select it. But if you don't want to select it individually, if I just click on it, make sure that it's selected, anything I do to it here, it does to everything equally. Otherwise, you have to make sure you selected everything. All right, so got my Mutz fan of the game text, but I want to make it look like a lower third. A lower third is what you see in the news where it says the name of the direct uh, sorry the name of the reporter who is doing the story or sometimes it's just the breaking news logo it's on the lower third of the screen and that's where you that's only where you'll ever see it it'll never be on the top third otherwise it wouldn't be called a lower third so to make a lower third though it needs a background before we do that though i'm gonna lock all of these things that we've already done because I don't want to mess with them. I don't want to click on them accidentally and move them. Also, before I do anything else, right here, see these colors? So my light rings are red. My Mutz vector picture is blue. My color, my video audio files are green. So let's make this one something different. Let's make it cyan. Nope, that's too close. Dark green. But you can't see. Yellow. Yellow is very different. So there you go. So you can change the color to keep yourself organized. I promise it will help you. It'll always make your life easier if you will keep track of that. All right. So now we're going to make a new solid. And again, I don't really care. I kind of like dark gray for this. This is completely up to you. You pick the color. It's just going to be the background behind the text. So I click OK. And now I'm going to move this. I want to move it behind my text because I want to see my text. So to do that, I click, I drag it down, I drop it. So now I can see my text. So I'm good. Come back up here to my rectangle tool. And I click and drag behind where it says Mutt's fan of the game. All right. So I've masked off what I want. But... I'm not 100% sold on this. I think that maybe I want to toy with that a little bit. So let's click on it until I get all these extra dots. If you double, you don't double click, you slow double click. And it brings up your extra points. And then I can adjust the shape. So I kind of make it look a little bit more like the sign, because the sign is a little bit trapezoidal to me. So there we go. So that looks a little better. So now it looks like it matches the sign more to me. So now we've got our background, we've got our lower third, everything looks good, except for the fact that it sits on the screen, which I don't want that. I want it to come into the screen after that's moved over, right about here. Well, just like before, we're going to go into the transform menu. And I can do this two ways. I can transform the text and the solid, or I can do this a much faster way. These little swirly lines here, these little, they're little whips are what they're called. I'm gonna grab my whip and I'm gonna tag it on the dark gray solid. So now what that's telling it is whatever this dark gray solid does that I'm gonna rename as lower third background, to rename something, you click on it, hit enter, and then type what you want. So I'm going to parent it to this lower third background. So now, whatever I do to the lower third background, it's going to do that to the text. So I'm going to grab my x axis and I'm going to move it off the screen. Okay, so now if I watch this, it's not on the screen. And at and I can have it come in maybe at about, let's say, five seconds. And apologies for 
using a trackpad mouse. It's kind of hard to do all this. All right, that looks. Oh, what did I not do? I didn't click the clock. So we're going to reset this back to 640 where it was. We're going to click the clock, and that puts my keyframe in. But that's not where I want it at this point. Where I want it to be there at 5 seconds, right? And at 4 seconds, I want it off the board. So now if I move it off, see, you know when you've clicked the clock, you know when it's actually going to move when you can see these dots. This line is telling you that there's actual motion there. So now when I play it, everything looks better. All right, so now everything is ready to go. One thing I didn't cover, if yours the whole time has had a black background, all it is is this button right here. This toggles the transparency of the background. This isn't necessarily what it's going to look like, and that's what we're going to cover right now. So composition, add to render queue, or I can click command M on the keyboard, and it's going to add it to the render queue down here. Under the render queue, I click lossless, and I'm going to come up here to channels, RGB plus alpha. If you don't do RGB plus alpha, when you render it out, it really will look like that. But as long as you do the alpha, it will stay transparent behind it. So now, when I click here and name it and tell it where to save it, then I click render. Now when it renders out, it's actually going to render that as transparent. So now we're going to have a one minute video with the Mutz logo in the corner and the Mutz fan of the game across the bottom. And then in one minute, we will have more than enough time to introduce the Mutz fan of the game and get them ready to go. All right, guys, hopefully that made at least some sense.